It's the apple of everybody's eye. It's the matchup of the week. Phoenix rising 20 consecutive victories. It's an unparalleled stretch in American soccer. Tonight, they visit Chuck Chansey Park in downtown Fresno, California, where the Foxes are 10 unbeaten at home. Tonight's match presented by Chevron. So glad to have you aboard. Mike Watts, Matt Stubbington on the call for this one. You think about what makes these teams great. Phoenix is going to reset most every record in the book. 77 goals already this year. Oh, and it's fantastic. I mean, the whole team is contributing to what Phoenix Rising have been doing this season. Conversion rate is outstanding. Assists, everything is fantastic with what the Rising are doing. But you look at Fresno, that's a pretty special statistic as well. 51 goals in league play. And there are a lot of teams that will be thrilled to have scored that many goals. No doubt about it. Tonight's matchup of the game is brought to you by Own a Car Fresno. Own a Car Fresno, drive with style. Asante, all style. He's got to be the league MVP. Oh, he has to be. Captain Fantastic is absolutely wonderful. Explosive on the dribble, technically gifted, brilliant vision as well. Be able to get his head up and find his teammates. He's just a really fantastic player. And as he goes, Phoenix Rising go, and he's been really special this year. And consequently, so of his team, the Phoenix Rising. He is the North Star and a constellation of stars for Phoenix Rising. Meanwhile, who has to slow him down? Most of it's going to fall on Alex Cooper. These two tonight, though, are going to be a really big deal for Fresno. Well, the head coach for the Phoenix Rising identifies these two players as key in why Fresno have been so special this year. They get so far up the pitch, balanced in the attack, stretching out the opposition with width, and they give Fresno options as far as the possession game is concerned. So these two players, if they can get forward on the attack, they're going to be really tough to deal with for Phoenix Rising tonight. And who's going to be in front of them? It's going to be a wildly different lineup than most Fresno fans know, and their game plan is going to be quite clear. Is it going to be a perfect blackjack for Phoenix Rising? It's been an incredible run, four months in the making. You aren't going to want to miss this one. Lineups and kickoff are coming up. get a shot of him. Welcome back. Referees taking the field. Fresno and Phoenix not far behind. Enjoy this moment. It is a spectacular game ahead. Number one and number three in the Western Conference. Let's take a look at our El Mexicano starting lineups. I saw this lineup, Matt, my jaw dropped. Oh, it's really, really surprising. You would think that Johnson and Jackson would be in the starting lineup with speed down the flanks, but Martin Al Halic, they're good players, don't get me wrong, but it's not exactly what we'd expect. Of course, you got the magician Kaffa there playing behind Chavez. Chavez with 11 goals on the year. 
Johnson, Jackson, and Lawal could provide a real punch off the bench. Meanwhile, the El Mexicano starting lineup for Phoenix Rising. Asante, the superstar on the right-hand side, Vassal on loan from LAFC, is really impressed. He is a wonderful player, and there's so much balance and talent in this Phoenix Rising team. You've got the speed of Flemings on the left, the hold-up player, Jean through the middle, and of course, you've got Musa playing that holding midfield role as well. It's a really talented team, and no real weaknesses to be seen in this Phoenix Rising squad. Let's take a look at tonight's road to victory. It's brought to you by Travel Shop. For Phoenix, it's all about what Kaffa can and can't do. You know, Rick Schantz said, everything goes through Kaffa. And basically he says, don't let Kaffa kill you. And you think good things will happen. For Fresno, they've got to take the right risks. Go forward when the opportunity presents itself. But take care of the ball, especially in their own half of the field. It's blackjack or bust tonight for Phoenix Rising. It's the most stunning streak in American soccer history. 20 straight wins and a Fresno side who haven't lost at home in their last 10 tries. Welcome to what could easily be a Western Conference Final Preview with Matt Stubbington, Mike Watts from downtown Fresno and Chuck Chansey Park. Matt, every coach we seem to talk to has wanted a piece of, of Phoenix at this point, not because they enjoy the idea of potentially losing, but because they fantasize about the opportunity the to win. It is, and the streaks are made to be broken, and if you can be the spoiler, if you can ruin the streak that the Rising are on, then you take your own place in history because you're the team that ends it. The ball skids away from Ali Hajik. Kuramoto gets up to meet it. with Phoenix, for whom statistics almost don't tell enough of the story. It, it's been a staggeringly impressive run. They've broken the league goal scoring record, half a dozen games to go. Comes over to Dumbuya, and kept in play by Aguinaga. Aguinaga the lone change from the most recent game, a 4-1 win against Galaxy 2, Asante. High arcing effort, John in front, sliding down Del Campo. Ali Hodgick clears. Less than 100 ticks in, and John right on the doorstep already. Dombaya with the searching ball down the flank. Sante with his explosive speed, so quick off the mark. It's not just his top speed, he's explosive with his first step, gets to his top speed so quickly. Just puts the ball in the right area. Jean was there on the doorstep. It wasn't for Del Campo. Sliding effort. We would be talking about a goal already. For Phoenix, their most recent game was at home. It was abandoned inside the final 20 minutes of the game. An item was thrown onto the field, and it was decided that the game would be abandoned at that point. The rising front office putting out a statement explaining the scenario and probably best that we leave it that statement to best describe what occurred as this will skip away for Fresno their most recent match 5-0 win against RGV a message that Adam Smith compared to Reno's blowout win over Tacoma earlier this year in Phoenix's shellacking of Austin one of those giant margins that sort of sends a clear statement of intent across the conference up again with John back away from Flemings and this is hammered from distance into fire squad Fresno even missed the fire squad Take a look at tonight's injury report. It's brought to you by Physio Motion. Still out, Moses and Basulovic. Vaccaro was questionable. He is jogging and beginning to move around a bit, but he's not quite ready yet. And of course, the injury to Adam Smith is on everybody's mind. The Fresno manager still in a, a shoulder sling after what we were told was a bicycle accident. 
I feel like I need more details. <laughs> Sky's up where Musa takes over. And the native Englishman who plays with New Zealand's whole national team controlling the middle of the field tonight. This role even bigger with Cubon Lambert. Not in the uh, starting 11. Kafa goes to ground. He's won a free kick. It appears. It may simply be a throw. I think Kafa's arguing for the free kick. I heard the whistle go. Looks like it is going to be a set piece off on that far sideline. Kafa sold it well. Seems the challenge from Amadou Dia was a little innocuous, but then you the bottom of the left fullback's boot made contact with the shin of Kaffa. It's worth He's noting that uh, Kaffa dealt with an injury earlier this year due to a challenge from Duigi Mala from Phoenix as well. Mala not in the starting 11. Looks like he's going to be okay to take the free kick, though. This is where Kaffa really can do spectacular things. Kaffa serves. Lubin got a palm to that. This will goes a, again. Yeah, looking around here. Lubin's got to feel a little hard done. He already did the work. He's going to have to do it again. Mr. Garcia says Pablo Kaffa can have a do-over. Kaffa, the native Argentine. Kaffa swinging in. That's punched away by Lubin. Martin allows it to go all the way to Cooper. Elijah Martin pops it up. And Martin pursues. It's behind Cooper. And Phoenix in transition moments can be deadly. It's an area they expect to try and exploit Fresno tonight. Junior Flemings putting on a clinic. Driving the early ball beyond Aguinaga. And Phoenix Rising just putting the ball in the right areas. And he's expecting support to be there. Change of direction, wrong footing. The defense of Fresno. Aguinaga was doing his best to get into the box, but a little late arriving. Knocked ahead, Chavez, there's the flag. Little late to the party. Chavez, two goals a week ago, 11 goals on the year, and perhaps surprisingly, and who combined with him up front, a two forward look is on the bench in Kudus to the wall. And that is the, the surprise, is that Anna Smith has gone away from that two forward look. Kaffa playing in the hole behind Chavez. Other than along the side. Matt, in the lead up to this game, it was quite clear the contrast of styles between these two. Fresno on defense here. Asante turned it over. Fresno so often will play 35, 40 yard balls, so much so that Rick Schantz felt maybe that was their average length of pass. But ultimately, it is a very English style that fits the, the manager of the Foxes in Adam Smith. It does. Not quite the, the long ball team that they were a year ago. Rick Schantz said a year ago it was smash and grab, get it to Kaffa and play it <laughs> forward. Gave Fresno a little more credit this year, speaking with the Phoenix manager months ago. It's been interesting to see how Adam Smith has developed his team and different personnel. That was one thing that we thought we might see some of physical play from Fresno tonight. Fleming's knocked down by Alex Cooper. 
of the Foxes are shy about physical contact. Just want a little rash from Cooper, the left fullback. He's gone underneath Fleming, defending the number seven from Phoenix Rising. will get a second effort, perhaps. So blue, play on here. Dia. Left to short, Nellis Aiden on the run. Sprints by Musa. To the switch, Dumbuya. Down under the pressure of Martin, kept by Vassal. It was a nice intercept from Ellis Hayden. Puts his head down, gets into the attacking half. Chavez though, just couldn't find a way to angle his run to be useful in support. Corey Whelan on the ball, the Liverpool youth who signed midway through this year. Offside flag is up. Sante, too far ahead. Asante has played on the left and the right already, trying to find the best area to exploit. Those players given free reign to go wherever he deems fit. One thing I really enjoyed hearing from Rick Schantz over the last few months with, with John Beccaro, the fact that he sort of feels Asante's movement in a certain way that maybe younger players typically don't. Rick Schantz was really impressed by that in training. That's a Beccaro unavailable, but of Asante's effectiveness is how his teammates work alongside him as well. That's well, one thing giving a player of his quality the free reign to, to go wherever and to do whatever. Well, Asante is disciplined and does stay on the right for quite long periods. But it's understanding where he's going and when he's going to make those other runs, those other movements that teams with lesser communication would struggle with. Whelan plays it out. Cooper lost it with Asante. Ball hunting, turning into space. Played on Tordagi Naga, and Cochran came out, nearly got his head knocked off by the onrushing defender, Del Campo. Del Campo just curtailed his run just enough. Naga, I think it was, that was causing Del Campo some problems. It was Solomon Sante on defensive duty there, popping up. Transitioning into offense so quickly. Lubin pulls this in. Martin, the closest player for the Foxes. A little conservative from the Foxes defensively. They're trying to shape things to make these passes along the back predictable. You see Chavez dropping off to try and take the angle away of, for the back pass. Pinch things in on that sideline. Hopefully the press will work as far as the Fresno fans are concerned. And cover things up in the midfield as well. In this case, they played out of it quite well. Musa went up for the header. And Mickey Daly plays it further. Slipped ahead for Aginaga. Aginaga, John toward Musa. Aginaga on the turn away from Mickey Daly. Dia. All dumped ahead out of the reach of Dia. Goal kick for CJ Cochran, whose name has been conspicuously left out thus far. Huge penalty save against RGV last time out on Wednesday night. And it 
kept the momentum in Fresno's direction in a moment where things very much could have turned. That's what you want from your goalkeeper coming up big when the question is asked. And, and he's done that several times this year, more so than midweek. First time as a number one for Cochran, who came on loan from Nashville for a while last year to get some reps. Matt Pickens was the pick of the litter. This lob forward, well out of the reach of Jaime Chavez. That's not just trying to be organized defensively. Ending a little bit of a, a low block. Chavez and Kafka can make things predictable. Pinch things on one side of the field, they will do so. It's the entry pass right there that has to be better defended, though, by the Foxes, because once that pass is made, then things can be difficult. Aguinaga, who last year was with Red Bulls, too. Strong cut inward. Flemings, let's fly. Inside, outside move from Flemings. A lot of the attack from Phoenix Rising, surprisingly going down their left flank. With Amadou Dia as the left fullback, who loves to get forward, maybe not surprising. Benefit from Flemings was high and wide. A little disappointed. Didn't challenge Cochrane in goal. Chavez, Samora joined midseason. Only Hodgick. Further now up the right hand side. Deflected ball will come out for a Fox's corner. I was Hayden asking Mr. Garcia for a free kick on the handball, but that will not be forthcoming. He's no, doing a fairly decent job of sitting in, and they're allowing too many shooting opportunities from Phoenix at this point in this match, but they're also looking fairly decent, the Foxes, going forward. Conservative, there's only four people in the box, though. Ball laid along. Lifted up and cleared by Jean. Second ball whipped in. This will fall to Martin. Martin sends Lubin flinging to the side, but that was never going to be on frame. Well, there's a lot of traffic in front of the goalkeeper. He was interested for a moment. Make sure that it went wide of his upright. Fresno trying to keep things alive. A little trickery on the set piece. Martin trying to threaten the goal on the second phase of play from the set piece. Del Campo. Chested down by Chavez. Flag stayed down. And this hammered across and out. Martin approaching the back post. Lubin threw a hand out, never had to make a touch. And look at Phoenix like shot out of a cannon. It's Asante, 22 goals and 15 assists. The only thing that remains in question for Asante is whether he'll break the goal or the assist record, or both. This place in history is secure. This is arguably the, uh, the best season by an individual in league history. Asante trying to spring forward Adam John. Asante, it's a complete performance from him this year. It's not that last year was incomplete. It just, I mean, there have been moments where he just gets a bee in his bonnet and puts the team on his shoulders and says, okay, the rest of you guys aren't getting it done. I'll, I'll do it on my own. And the what? A bee in his bonnet. Okay. 
Is that like Superman's cape? <laughs> yeah, it certainly could be in his case. <laughs> You lost me transatlantically there. <laughs> Kaffa strikes it into play. And Flemings pushes it down, works with Vassal. Put Phoenix in possession again. 20 minutes nearly gone. And this turned over. The Phoenix defensive third. And Martin, all ball, says the referee. Perfect challenge. Ali Hodgick, the overlapping Ellis Hayden. And a corner for Fresno. Come just after the 20 minute mark. Well, Martin is up, which is the good news for Fresno. This is a heavy challenge. The referee is right there. Little drag back. Ball comes in. I'm not sure whether that was all ball or not. The referee was right there and indicated it to be so. Either way, with the overlapping run of Ellis Hayden, Preston are able to win the corner kick. And Ellis Hayden's doing his best to get forward on that right flank and cause some problems. Kopf on the service. And Phoenix continues get the first head on all these set pieces terrific defense at the outset and they spring into the attack lifted toward Aguinaga slides it forward Flemings on the cutback and Fresno are being conservative with the numbers they're playing forward on set pieces and they're doing a good job of transitioning to the defensive side of the ball Getting numbers back inside the box and taking away the passing lanes. You know, Matt, I, I looked at the lineup and my first thought was Fresno's going to try and filibuster this thing out for 70 minutes and then bring on three starting caliber attacking threats against tired legs and see if they can pull it out. That that was the, the initial thought that rolled through my head. And I wouldn't have disagreed with you at all. Credit to the Foxes, they're trying to go forward, they're trying to create the opportunities, they're not just willing to sit back and absorb pressure. No. Of course, here's the Phoenix Rising, if you do that, you are certainly just asking for trouble. But this certainly isn't the bomb forward, heavy numbers kind of situation that perhaps Fresno's become most known for thus far. Part of the master plan of the tactician who's got Fresno three points away from reaching the playoffs for the first time in their truncated two year history. And Asante got tackled and he's grabbing down to his left shin and ankle. Adam Smith was so disappointed not to make the playoffs last year. Just couldn't find a way to turn the draws into wins. Went on an unbeaten streak of at least nine games at one point last season, but the majority of that unbeaten streak was just the one point, not the three point version of not losing a game. Consequently, they were on the outside looking in when it came to postseason play. The world at large is happy to see the 29-year-old Ghanaian, Solomon Asante, labor back to his feet. Healthy enough to continue on. And Peter Lee Vassal drives it over the top, header down, will steer wide. AJ Cochran and Adam John, the two biggest bodies in front of the cage. And make no mistake, with Phoenix, they were expected to be not good, but great, all things considered. They maybe stumbled a bit out of the gate. There's a little bit of jeering going on. This 20-game win streak has put any semblance of disapproval to bed. Rick Schantz, twice an interim coach, including taking over for the Fresno general manager, Frank Yallop, the beginning of the Phoenix Rising era. 
Patrice Cantoron arrived. Patrice Cantoron eventually would leave midway through last year. And Shant's the perfect pilot to carry the team to the USL Championship Final. The cross here from Cooper. There's a splayed body in the box and no whistle from the referee. Naginaga picks it up short of midfield and finds John on the run. Of course, Phoenix also had a superstar of their own last year that outshined even Solomon Asante, as good as he was. The magnificent, legendary Didier Drogba. How special as Drogba was, though, at some at points in the season, it felt like it was addition by subtraction when Drogba wasn't in the lineup. Phoenix Rising were at times better. But of course, he was pretty impressive in that postseason <laughs> run. Scored in every game leading up to the final and watched his career end in Louisville, Kentucky. Cross lofted toward the height disadvantaged Solomon Asante, grabbed by Cochran. I mean, it, at some point, you're picking nits with this Phoenix <laughs> side, right? Absolutely. I mean, there's a point where you're asking Rick Schantz, how do you get better? And, you know, they're, they're making strides. They, they have individual things and team things they want to do better, but one twenty in a row. A lot of those don't seem quite so obvious. Free kick here for Fresno in the 26th. You ask any coach, they'll say, oh, I want my team to be better at the end of the season than they were at the beginning of the season. And I want my team to be consistent in the way they're playing. And but when you've, you've been <laughs> as good as Phoenix Rising have been, it's, I mean, they've been consistent. One would argue that they are better now than they were. I mean, they're certainly better now than they were at the beginning of the season because they keep winning. What's impressive, though, Mike, is that they keep doing it in different ways as well. There have been games where they've... Off a short run up, and it falls right to Lubin. It was a sliding effort by Del Campo at the goal mouth, trying to get the finishing touch. Good service in. Love these bending, dipping balls. Makes it so difficult for the defense to play. They're facing their own goalkeeper. They don't want to touch the ball. Lubin just being patient on his line there. And the ball has come to him. Fainted as touch from Del Campo. It would have been in the back of the net. Thing with Phoenix, they've played close games. They've had games where they've blown the opponent out of the water. One thing they haven't really done a whole lot of is play from behind during this streak. Huh. Funny you mention that. Did you do some research about I did. that? Asante. Striking over the 18-yard box. There's an appeal there and a handball against Phoenix Rising in the 20-game win streak in the league, which stretches all the way back to a loss against uh, Orange County on May the 4th. Phoenix has trailed five times, never more than 35 minutes in a game. 72 of the last 1,800 minutes they've played from behind. I mean, it is otherworldly I, I I'm lost I'm just lost I mean, it's outstanding I mean. funny thing about it for the five teams they've trailed against MLS affiliated sides Monarchs T2 Galaxy 2 Tacoma Defiance and then five minutes to Sacramento comes back to uh, Whelan and Dumbuya gave it away. Fresno does feel like off turnovers. That's going to be their bread and butter if they're to knock off the rising here. Cooper. Musa wasn't able to get a good piece of that. Kaffa on the reversal. I like to see Cooper. Ellis Hayden deflects, comes out. Corner, Fresno. As far as Cooper is concerned, I'd like to see him come inside and use the right peg a little bit more. It's very difficult to deliver that cross without getting to the, the byline. It's difficult to deliver that 
ball with the left foot behind the defenders. If you come inside, it's a little bit easier to bend that ball in. As you see Ellis Hayden there, just putting the head down, trying to get the byline, and wins yet another corner kick. The third he's responsible for winning. Kafa off the hands of Lubin, who is pushed in the process. A lot of set pieces, but as yet, not anything really threatening. Certainly not off the corner kick. Del Campo actually pushed one of the defenders. It was a Phoenix rising player that banged into his own goalkeeper. Foul by proxy. Foul <laughs> by proxy. The dubious fouls committee? No, <laughs> not, that's not in, in question here. It just seems that sometimes the, uh, the goalkeepers have the uh, non-contact jersey on. Naga swirls in service that uh, falls kindly to Cochran. Well, it's a match that I'm sure some of the league office wish had fallen on a Wednesday. This is the kind of Wednesday night soccer match you dream of. Scoreless, just over 30 minutes in. As it stands now, it's the match of the night in the USL Championship. Phoenix has won 20 straight. Fresno 10 straight unbeaten at home. Fresno in a tense battle for second place, while Phoenix has easily wrapped up the Western Conference earlier than any team ever has in this league, wrapped up their conference in the number one seed. The road to the USL Championship will most certainly run through Phoenix, although Fresno has not only beaten Phoenix here, they have grabbed points at Casino Arizona Field as well. Those are times that Fresno is not playing on the transition. They're just trying to take the air out of the ball a little bit, slow things down. Select ball. I thought those were always perfectly played. Foul here. Well, they are, unless you deliberately take the air out. Take the air out. <laughs> Phoenix had a game last year, the, the championship final against Louisville, where they had to switch balls in the opening couple minutes. with a heavy challenge, leaving his feet. Dumbuya to throw, 25 hour flight back from Sierra Leone where he's capped for the national team over a dozen times. He moved to England at five years old during a civil war in his home country. Chavez, maybe there's a little room here. Played ahead towards Samora. Whelan clears it into the stands. Ball knocked across, punched away from the head of Chavez. Sante stopping and starting his run on the ball now. Vassal. Musa. John with a full head of steam. Looking at the movement of Asante, it's fantastic. Changes direction so quickly. I mean, this is like dessert at the end of an incredible day in the USL Championship. This is a, a treat for the eyes. The only thing missing at this point is a clear goal scoring opportunity and I mean, the best opportunity came 95 seconds into the match with Adam John. And even that didn't no, never require a save. Right. Because the good work of Del Campo. Stabbed away by Samora a second time now, but this will fall Moraginaga. Dia. Flemings tried to pirouette through. 
See it. Alahadzic just coming in narrow on that right side. Coming in to support Samara and Kuramoto as they collapse on the midfield. Trying to win the ball from Phoenix Rising. Of course, when you've got the speed of Ellis Hayden on that right flank, you can afford to come on the inside a little bit more than perhaps you would otherwise. Here's Ellis Hayden. 24th start of the year. One League Two with Kitchener Waterloo back in 2015. He's 27 years old now, native of Ontario. Challenge through the legs. Worked out. And the press of Phoenix nearly pulled up. Dumbuya has to follow the run of Cooper. Martin. And Basel, uh, apparently a piece there, Martin. I was a little surprised that the referee didn't blow a whistle. And Adam Jean had the ball at his feet. It's a wonderful skill from Jean to control and turn on the ball. And Martin telegraphing his pass a little bit. And Basel just coming in with the clumsy challenge, stepping in. Martin has been a revelation a little bit for Adam Smith this year. Elijah Martin played in a Youth World Cup, played in the Galaxy Academy system, and has reignited his career in Fresno. His coach says he'd been in the wilderness a bit. Kafa puts it in play. They're looking for the ball back in by Del Campo, and Chavez had come from an offside position to play it. by Samora to knock it away. And he helps Ack as the fulcrum in the other direction. Kurimoto gave it away. And on a full sprint, Peter Lee Vassal. What a couple of moves. Comes down to Dumbuya. And Vassal is there. Vassal on the cut. Lays it off John. And it's lifted away from the doorstep. Hard to be frustrated just yet if you're Adam John, who scored 15 goals this year. It was a moment of exi excitement. Ali Hatchik. Well, tried to force some excitement into the conversation. A look at Phoenix's last opportunity here in the 38th. It was a well struck shot there from Ali Hatchik, but Vassal created this off of the turnover from Kuramoto. All played into the dangerous area. Jean indicating that he wanted that ball played in a little bit quicker to his feet. Fresno scrambling, able to get the ball away again without acquiring a save from the goalkeeper. Like the incredible fans in Phoenix. The Fresno fans are hopping around in unison at present. They expend as much energy as some of the field players when it's all said and done, at least the goalkeeper. This is where Fresno are doing a good job of being organized defensively. Two lines of four. Densing the space, keeping the passing channels available to Phoenix Rising as narrow as possible. 
I'm <laughs> sure didn't appreciate that Mr. Garcia blew the whistle in his ear there. On the way by CJ Cochran. Lovely skill there in the back. Martin had it for a moment. And deflects off of Asante. Asante last year describing why he came to Phoenix talked about making history. Got a call from Didier Drogba. And that helped seal the deal. Of course his coach when he won the Champions League in Africa was the coach in Phoenix at the time. Dangerous sliding effort. Yellow card is coming as much because of uh, where on the field in the direction that Flemings was running. Flemings there did such a fantastic job of extracting himself and turning on the ball, exploding into the space that he created for himself. How he got through the two players, I don't know. There was a grab of the shirt. There was the turn. And there is the grab of the arm and the sliding tackle from Ellis Hayden. As fast as Ellis Hayden is, he probably could have found a way to get back on level terms with Flemings, but a little rash in the challenge. Mr. Garcia presents the yellow card. Will it be Vassal or Musa? It will be Vassal. Feathers the ball along. Martin. Samora. Ali Hajik. Ellis Hayden has sprung up the other way in front for Chavez. Another bite at the apple here, perhaps. The outside back, trying to push it through. Corner for Fresno, 41 minutes in, and what has been as, uh, as even a stalemate as you'll find. Ellis Hayden has been flying down that flank. Switching the point of attack with Fresno. Hayden getting to the byline again. I think it might have been Musa with the sliding challenge that deflected it away for a moment. And Hayden was able to find a way to win yet another corner kick. And yet again, after the corner kick, Kaffa's delivery is found wanting. And wonderful from Adam John. His defensive work on set pieces has been outstanding. John actually has a shutout bonus in his contract, despite being the, the go-to goal scorer as the number nine. Rick Schott said about uh, John, that's a Stanford man that comes up with that idea. <laughs> Cooper. Martin. Martin lashing for goal. That's the second time he's let it rip from outside the penalty area. This one a little bit closer. Edging nearer and nearer to Lubin's right hand post. And the goalkeeper, I think, have had to make a save yet in this game. Here comes Fresno in transition. It's well behind Jaime Chavez. And Vassal tries to split the defense. Lusa slides in. Vassal, Aguinaga, and uh, Musa combining in midfield tonight with Kevin Lambert getting a bit of a rest. Phoenix in a weird situation right now. You want to keep this amazing win streak alive, one that has brought additional sponsors and fan support and global recognition. By the same token, it is the American playoff system, and you're trying to get everybody in the best possible form for that. And so while they can wrap up the regular season championship in the USL championship, they still have greater ambitions that lie ahead. And you have that. You have to rotate players in. One to get the players some time, some reps, get them in form. But 
Also rest those that we're witnessing on the pitch tonight. Austin Ledbetter made the team of the week last week, and this isn't a shot at Austin Ledbetter. It's just the depth is really something. The team is clicking. Everybody has been called on at some point in this streak and come up, come up large. Get your tickets to the Fox's next home match. Can't imagine there's going to be much stoppage time after this half. It is swung back and forth. Got away from Aginaga. Took a tough hop. Buya spears it forward. Samora. Chavez. Chavez playing through Kafa. Head on a swivel. Lofts it up. Martin back post. Brings it down. Plays it across. Kafa, no. Chavez was likely offside, but play continues. And this is lobbed up over Martin. A little tug at the back of Dumbuya. And he wins the race. One minute at a time. Fresno committing a few more numbers forward than previous. Cooper. Header snapped. What a save, Lubin. Unreal save to deny Chavez. Well, it's a wonderful passage of play from the home team. And it might, might be offside. The referee on the far side has his flag up. Either way, this is unbelievable. Beautiful reaction save. It's a good height, but you have to set your feet. Change direction. He was offside. Lubin takes it. He wasn't playing the whistle. He was playing the header. My goodness, that is. It's unfortunate. Otherworldly. <laughs> it's not going to be considered as one for save of the week because <laughs> of the offside, but it should be. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. This is our shout to the folks at league headquarters. Let that stand at trial at least, offside or not. Well, there's been some special saves this week. Think about your midweek game that you called. Red Bulls two against St. Louis. Gomez and made a save at one end, and immediately Red Bulls two had a save Laura. at the other end. Laura. Kaffa might be the last kick of the half. Lubin makes the, the snag, and the referee points to the halfway line. Chavez and Lubin both walking off the field in unison. Game respect game. Well, that's been an interesting 45 minutes, a chess match, certainly between these two teams. Tactically, I think Adam Smith has got it right. His team are doing a really good job of keeping the rising FC at bay. But it's going to be interesting to see how things develop in the second half. Well, a draw isn't good enough for Phoenix. 20 straight wins. One point on the road at one of the toughest venues in the league to play at would be a disappointment. And so one imagines pressure is on. Who's going to find a goal in the second half? News, notes, highlight stats all coming up.
I'm quoting the Phoenix Rising Twitter account when I say this. Per the broadcast, we've only trailed 72 of a total of 1,800 minutes during our win streak. We didn't even know that. That's also the most scintillating thing to happen in the half so far. They're pretty much on point. Fresno and Phoenix will have a lot more fireworks in the second half. Plenty of fireworks in the week that was. And El Paso's got a pretty big match coming up on Wednesday night. Take a look. Welcome back. Fresno Football Club soccer presented by Chevron. Phoenix Rising is on the road and trying to keep this magical run alive. Back with Matt Stubbington, Mike Watts on hand. Let's take a look at what's been going on around the USL Championship of late. As some fans enjoy tacos, uh, we will be there soon enough. Mecklenburg County in North Carolina is going to break ground on Memorial Stadium, the future home of Charlotte Independence. It looks just tremendous. There is a chance that Reno and Fresno will both clinch this week. They would join Phoenix as the only three to do so so far in the West. That would be fantastic if Fresno were able to do that. West is surprising not more teams have clinched. And you look at the East and how many teams have clinched in that division at the moment. But who's at top? of the East is up for grabs. We know who's up for grabs or who is top <laughs> of the West. It's Phoenix Rising FC. In the East, there are four teams within one point right now for the top spot and uh, the number one seed in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Let's take a look at what's going on around the conference as we speak. San Diego is going to join this fold next year, it was announced. Landon Donovan's side. As it stands now, though, New Mexico goes down to Reno. That is a a difficult result if you're Fresno. Portland blowing out Tacoma in a Pacifica kind of battle. And Orange County, that's a big win for them as they keep climbing. It is a big win. You want to keep moving up the table as we wind this season down. And three points just gets you into that top four position, which is so important in the playoffs. So that's what's going on in the West. What does that mean within the table? Phoenix Rising is clear. There is no question who's number one. But as things stand right now, if current results hold, Fresno 
is the leader in the clubhouse for the number two seed. That's a real feather in the cap for Adam Smith. The, the improvement from 2018 to 2019 has been fantastic to be a witness of. And if Fresno are able to hold on to that second spot, and that's a real, a really good job done by Adam Smith. And he should get his rewards for a, a good performance this don't, year. Don't forget, top 10 are in the playoffs. Top six avoid the preliminary round. Top four will host a Western Conference quarterfinal. And believe it or not, that's just over a month away. Fans enjoying a little time off. Pins and needles. Everybody's going to be on the edge of their seat in the second half. We'll show you highlights when we come back. Welcome back. Things are rocking in Fresno tonight. Number one team in the USL Championship paying a visit. A win for the Foxes. They are officially in the playoff field. It's a massive night for the club. And for Phoenix, they just try and keep it rolling. Matt Stubbington, Mike Watts, let's take a look at first half highlights. And it's going to be a little bit of a thin dossier. It's been a pretty level match and a pretty contained match, Matt. It has. Adam Smith and his team have got the tactics exactly right. Flemings has been a bit of a troublesome player for the defenders of Fresno tonight. But it's so far, so good for the Foxes, able to keep things at bay. CJ Cochran, really, that was the only time he was tested in this first half. Flemings with this shot high and wide. He'll be disappointed with this effort. Uh, Fresno trying to keep things contained, trying to keep the lines tight defensively, able to spring forward on the counterattack. Martin with two shots in the first half, both of them going past the upright. And Hadjik, again, a long range effort, a lot of power in the shot, knuckling effort, but in the end it goes wide of Lubin's goal. Kafa is such an important person, such an important player for Fresno plays Ellis Hayden, who's been flying up and down that right flank, winning corner kicks all through the first 45. has been a real asset for Fresno. As yet, nothing really as far as shots on goal are concerned. This was the best effort. Ball in by Cooper, the header by Chavez. The wonderful save from Lubin, and the offside flag goes up from the assistant on the far side. So Lubin, even though it was a wonderful save, we'll not get credit for it. But there's your statistics of the first half. Pretty even down the whole picture, although the possession is in favor of the visitors. Nine total shots, nothing on target yet. And at halftime, Phoenix trying to scramble, find a goal. 
But they've been here before, they've done that, and 20 consecutive times, they have won the t-shirt. Let's take a look at what's upcoming for Fresno Football Club as they conclude their campaign in the championship at San Antonio, at El Paso. Two games on a Texas two-step before they welcome Tacoma Galaxy 2 and finish away to Orange County on the last day of the regular season. They hope that by the time they get to the 12th, they know where they're going to be in the standings. I will certainly hope that is the case. We don't want to be having to play Orange County with something on the line. They want to have cemented their place in the top four. That's an interesting schedule. Players, teams below them, teams that are not in the playoff picture, such as the Defiance, but I'd be interested to see how things progress. So what's up for Fresno after that? Who knows? We'll find out. Here's Phoenix Rising's upcoming schedule. They know they're going to host in the opening round of the playoffs. They finish on dollar beer night at Casino Arizona Field. It's a legend as old as time. <laughs> Yet another thing to celebrate. <laughs> but we know that all of these teams are below Phoenix Rising in the table. All of those teams will find, hoping that they will be the spoiler to ruin the streak that Phoenix Rising fans will hope will continue tonight. But Fresno, they've got a lot to say about this in the second half. Can they keep the tactic right? Can they find a way to pinch a goal? Rick Schott said that by the time those last two home games come around, no more talk of rotation for the most part. It's going to be about getting this team clicking on all cylinders. But those next two road games, there may be some significant turn turnover in their roster from game to game as they try and knock a couple miles off the odometer. When you talk with Rick Schantz about the pressure of the streak, for one, he feels like players ask for that by coming to Phoenix in the first place, given what they achieved a year ago. But one step further, he did admit, there's some guys who might run 13 kilometers instead of 12. And well, I just imagine that there's a little more tread on the tire when you do that for so long. It is, and when I mean, you look at Asante and how much he's had to do through the season and you wonder, even as fine a shape as these guys are in. And they are. I mean, it's the mental fatigue more than the physical fatigue and the message is not getting from the brain down to the feet when you are tired. It makes, it, that's where the challenge comes from. And, you know, at some point the streak has got to end and can they continue the streak into the postseason? Can they win? those games that they need to to win the big trophy at the end of the day. It might be something that they hope ends before postseason play so they can start their another win streak of their own that will end up in them taking the silverware home. Rick Schantz laughed on the phone a couple weeks ago. Said, you know, you think about some of the all-time great streaks in professional football, and apparently there has been a, a joke or two among the staff. They could be on a trivial pursuit card. Pep, Pep and Rick Schantz. <laughs> Who knows? There's a long way to go for that. He's a, a funny guy with duck socks on tonight. His uh, style game has never been stronger. Quick restart, Ellis Hayden on the move. To the back post, had her snap down, knocked aside. Lubin was there. Well, that's a clever restart from Kafa. And it's knocked out here by Whelan's uh, back line mate, A.J. Cochran, who's been rather quiet so far. Let's take a look at this. Well, Ellis Hayden was feigning injury. Ends up in a lot of space, and then quickly down the line. Good searching ball in. Chavez with the head up. In the run of play, I thought maybe it made contact with hand, but it didn't came off the thigh of the defender. That was Corey Whelan. That was the, I thought was there on the goal line. Indeed it was. And Phoenix has dodged the bullet here. Ball knocked across, well out of the reach of Chavez. And the onrushing Honey Hachik. The longer this game goes on, Phoenix has a howitzer on the bench. The impressive Jason Johnson, who's getting closer and closer to top form and full fitness. 
Fresno has three of the, the better attacking threats you could imagine off the bench in Jackson, an MLS Cup winner, Johnson, an EPL player, and Kudis Lawal, who's been on a torrid run, goal scoring form at certain points this year. Speed as well from those players, and experience. Three individuals that Nick Chance and his team will not want to see come off the bench. Aguinaga sidestepping up to Flemings. Amadou Dia. Vassal. Kafa. Chavez looks up, and that was a well-executed step in the back line. Kafa was well offside when that was done. It's probably the easiest offside call. The assistant on this night near sideline has ever had to make. Let's just say Kafa's not here for the blazing speed and trying to catch a back line at just the right moment. Time to pitch a tent and <laughs> brew a cup of tea. You've been camping offside so long. I mentioned the potential fatigue for Phoenix. I'll admit this. Doesn't look like it tonight. Still have that explosive nature to them. Haven't been able to direct anything on CJ Cochran's net just yet. And Ellis Hayden will come up short in his pursuit of the ball. And the home team doing a really good job of collapsing defensively. Keeping the lines tight, narrowing the passing lanes. Organization has been key for Fresno. Offside flag up, Flemings came from an offside position. We're 50 minutes in now. Phoenix, through their win streak now, 1,850 minutes. They've trailed for 72. They've led for 966 per Nicholas Murray from the USL's Encyclopedic League office. And 812 minutes now, they've played on level terms. Flemings trying to transverse the midfield. Kurimoto helped to break it up. Ali Hajik. Asante arrived. And a foul with Vassal getting knocked by Ali Hajik. Fresno just have to maintain their composure, not over pursue the ball. Maintain that organization. Get back on the transition. Corey Whelan. And Aguinaga not on the same page with the overlapping Dumbuya. A lot of frustration creeping in for Rising FC. The reaction of Aganaga there, the miscommunication. Phoenix right back in possession. It's a good ball right through the middle of the defense, and Musa was fouled. Samora gesturing back, and the referee has adjudicated the free kick. Seemed rather definitive as far as Mr. Garcia's demeanor there, gesturing into which direction the free kick will be taken. And I can see why the free kick was awarded. 
Oh, thinking that he got the ball first, but clipped the ankle. You can't do that, especially if you're coming from behind the player with that sliding challenge. Sante's over this. Seeing him score from the free kick. Is this perhaps a little too far out for Captain Fantastic? Asante. One by Del Campo. Dumbuya circles back to Musa. Dia. Here's Asante. Naginaga a bit behind Adam John. And John rolling into the defender. Flicked back by Ellis Hayden. First up, CJ Cochran. He had an incredible run with Oklahoma City Energy after Cody Lorendi was injured two years ago. Took the number six seed under Jimmy Nielsen all the way to the conference final. Some real theatrics along the way. Ultimately, watch Swole Park win the Western Conference playoff and advance the USL Championship final in 2017. Chavez. It's going to take a little magic here for Fresno to find their goal. They're to find one at all. They've only been shut out at home once this year. Flemings. Kurimoto slides his foot in, knocks Flemings down. He's taken a handful of fouls already in this second half. Fresno just not doing a very good job of completing those entry passes into their attacking half. Turning the ball over. Are doing a, a good job of getting back defensively, getting behind the ball. Don't have that organization. It's one thing, though, to get a two lines of four players behind the ball to play defensively but you also have to do some variation in those lines so that you can track the checking runs and the runs through and as you'll end up gifting your opposition space for them to exploit between those lines Vassal here his physical attributes just explode off the screen Lemmings thought he was fouled by uh, Alex Cooper, who hasn't been afraid to put his body into it tonight. Bounces ahead to Asante. Lifts this long. Well, that would make a wide receiver pretty, uh, pretty impressed. Cochran just did. Over Adam John, no less. Find a DB that size. That's some pretty good coverage there from John. <laughs> you never throw to the to the safety side. Just don't do it. Lone high safety. Well, well, well shaded. Well covered. Here's Asante hitting the accelerator. Musa. The ball weaves over to Dia. And Dia cracks Aguinaga. Shoving the back of Cooper to Creates some space for the diving header from Aganaga. Mr. Garcia telling him that, hey, I saw those two arms. Hands go on the back of Cooper. It wouldn't have counted if you'd have put this one on frame. There's the little push. You see the space that develops between the two players. Elsewhere tonight, El Paso's game has gone final. That's Fresno's next opponent. El Paso in 10th in the Western Conference. A 2-0 win tonight. And the side to welcome Jerome Kiesewetter, the U.S. men's national team, player of uh, the Jurgen Klinsmann era. Continues in their expansion season to try and make the postseason. Has been rather impressive, the fact that at this stage, Austin, New Mexico, and El Paso, all expansion teams, make the playoffs in the West. 
Ball comes down to Flemings, who had a quick trigger. Given away by Martin Naginaga. John turns away in disgust. Yeah, down for Fresno. Ooh, might be Samara. Athletic training staff will come on to provide attention. So, stretching the calf muscle out. Way stretching out. One has to wonder at this stage what it was. It didn't come after any immediate contact. Communication Asante, yeah. there. Yeah. Naginaga, John. Naginaga tried to play the ball in. It wasn't delivered where John had wanted it. And so it just turned around in disgust. And you see Samara just reacting as if it, something had developed. And he's up, which is good to see. Well, they lost Seth Moses to a fracture in the middle of the season. And they needed a dog, they said, midfield. Covers a lot of ground. He was at Loretto Heat earlier this year, the native of Sierra Leone, who came really from nothing and has played himself into a contract in Fresno. Yeah, they're an eye on him for a while. It does look like Samura's number is about to come up. It'll be Lowell, I believe, coming on in his stead, which I think it's the question now, where are the pieces going to be moved? Would imagine that one would look to see Kaffa come back into the midfield, which will be interesting to see how things work defensively there with Kaffa. Can he do the job that is required? Lawal coming in. Five goals for Fresno against RGV. Lawal had a pair playing up front with Jaime Chavez. It's a wonderful partnership. Lawal getting the early goal. Difficult skill moving to his left. Well taken by number 20. Well, that on Wednesday night. Does he have that kind of juice in him tonight off the bench? Alpha has dropped back into the midfield alongside Koromoto. Be a lot of defensive responsibilities for Kafa now. He's got to make sure he plays both sides of the ball. Dia. The entire Phoenix bench is watching. Couple clever moves with John the second. The jury is made up entirely of white shorted, red shirted players. And they deem a corner. And him with the captain's armband drives it in. Asante. Luol. Musa. Chavez. Driving along. Bounces back into Asante and out of his reach. A little bit of a statement from Adam Smith. Mention it. A few conversation with him in the week that playing the two up top. There's a little bit of a risk and a statement to the rest of the league that they're going more on the offensive side of things, trying to score goals. It worked midweek. Kaffa in the midfield and can he do the job defensively that will be required wall tossing his body into AJ Cochran Cochran was a 16th overall pick to Houston in 2014 Dia 20th overall pick in 2015 to Kansas City. It's the Liverpool youth, Whelan. I swear that was a foul throw. It wasn't called, but I swear it was a foul throw. Ali Hajik, there's nothing developing. And here comes Vassal. John shimmies forward, Flemings. Flemings on the cut. Got leveled off the ball by Daly. 
Good patient defending there from Daly. Didn't commit. Just rides the player off of the ball. Kuramoto tracking runs from the midfield as well. His defensive responsibilities have increased with Kafa stepping back into that central midfield role. Kafa orchestrating. Cooper. Asante drops in. Cooper launching goes all the way through and Luwala giving up on that. Thought someone would get ahead to it. Teasing stuff from Cooper. Well, that's what I was asking him to do in the first half. Can't get round the corner and cross it in with the left peg. Come inside and try with the right. And that was a teasing ball. Played into the right area. 2-4, Chavez and Lawal have to do better. Have to organize their runs. Anticipate that ball coming in. As Mr. Garcia blows his whistle again. And for the Phoenix Rising down. It's Cochran there. Cochran bouncing through Houston. Briefly with the battery on loan. Then to St. Louis, Atlanta United 2. He was the captain there. A native of St. Louis. Played for the famed St. Louis Scott Gallagher Academy. Which is now tied at the hip to St. Louis FC. And he's come in and grabbed the center back role. All of a sudden with Wheeling coming in, there's a, a lot of competition there. With Farrell trying to find time as well. Aguinaga. Asante. John. Huh. <laughs> Didn't come off there for Dumbuya. Case of not the right page. It was the completely the wrong book. Cooper clips it out. Change coming for Phoenix in a moment. Asante on the spin, low center of gravity. It's Vassal. Kuramoto steers it aside. Good hold up play by Lawal and played through by Ellis Hayden. Kafa on the move. Back heels it on. On rushing Cooper. Cooper! He has scored some absolute bangers from there this year. Well, we saw it against Las Vegas Lights. He has the range. Clever back heel here from Kafa. Wonderful counter attack by the home team. Just leaning back, drifting wide left of the goal. Kevon Lambert comes in. Aganaga's day is done. And that was a dangerous counter there for the Foxes. Kevin Lambert among more highly celebrated young players in this league. It's mind blowing to think he's still only 22 and one would imagine he's yet to reach his ceiling. And who dove into the Phoenix fold after the 2017 CONCACAF Gold Cup. I play with Jamaica, Fleming's. Fleming strikes and knocked down. And Cochran will run out and collect it. Stinging shot here from Flemings. Goalkeeper gets his positioning right. Second time of asking. Cochrane is able to corral the ball. Thankful to do so. Samara going out with what looked like an injury. Certainly, if not a tactical change. Has opened some space with Kaffa stepping back into the central midfield role. Looking at the substitutes, though, 
for Adam Smith. I wonder who would come in in that middle area of the field. Casillas has played in that role earlier on in the season. I have to believe that Adam Smith would love to bring on Jackson and Johnson on the outside if possible. Oh, shoring things up in the middle area of the pitch. Falls here, Lawal. Lawal breaking it down. He'll take the shot. Fresno leads 68 minutes in. Is this the moment where Fresno grabs the biggest win in franchise history? Eleven months ago, an unknown trial is scored against Club Leon of Mexico in a friendly. They signed him to a deal, and now he's put Phoenix in dangerous territory. Seemed to come from nothing. The wall ends up on the ball. A little shimmy, a little shake. He sends Cochran and Wheeler in the wrong way. Lubin went the right way, but could do nothing to keep it out. It was a well-placed shot with the left foot not a whole lot of power on it but just enough and a man you've never heard of 12 months ago has 10 goals for fresno and smoke pouring out of fire squad fresno and phoenix for the sixth time in this win streak are playing from behind And what is so different about this than even the unbeaten streak that Cincinnati had last year? A draw doesn't keep this thing going the way a win does. And it's not to say that this streak will be anything more or less based on the number it ends at. It, it's, it's incredible by any standard you can imagine. But that particular streak it's going to need two Phoenix goals to continue. Well, Kaffa is coming out, now coming in. Debut for Yao. Tanzanban being transferred to Mickey Daly. The question that I had has been answered as far as the defensive side of the ball. And Kaffa's rolling that. And Smith wants to shore things up and make sure that the lines stay tight and organized. Now coming in. Kaffa will take his sweet time to come off. Yao, born in New York. Moved to Europe at a young age, went to Metz in France, has most recently been in Germany's three Liga. And uh, Luxembourg's top division for a while. Fresno's been chasing him for a while, and they got him to fly over, join the side. Has a chance to be a part of history. And this is right at the goalkeeper, and Lubin goes to work. to restart quickly, unable to do so because of Noel's positioning. Hatsik has joined Koromoto in the center area of the pitch. Yao on the right. Martin remains on the left. plays it back and Whelan has a, a lengthy distance. Chavez chasing Lubin.
foul here. And a dismissive wave of the hand from Asante. So difficult to defend. Low center of gravity, quick feet. Changes of direction. Ball knocked. In an area where Phoenix felt a handball should have been called in the penalty area. Play on. Flemings. And Kuramoto with a bit of skill, but gave it away to Dia. And Dia looking to the back post. Back to Asante. Asante, shifty, and was able to find either Vassal or Lambert. And Cochran will begin to try and run this clock off a couple seconds at a time. Clever free kick from Asante, realizing that Fresno was sleeping. Quickly, the Foxes were awoken when the ball was played forward and able to do just enough defensively. The wall. Yao. Slips it ahead and didn't find Chavez. They were off by just a hair. And Chavez was off by just a hair, too. Flemings does well to keep this one in. Shrugs off the challenge of Kuramoto, but not Ellis Hayden. Flemings is holding his right ankle. As Ellis Hayden is now upended. And a card's coming out. That's a yellow to Dia. The wall has gone right into his face. There's additional stuff coming now from the side. Molly Hodgick. Flemings has come in. There's a yellow shown to the wall. Musa trying to keep the peace. Boy, there are going to be yellow cards upon yellow cards out of this. The wall got completely upended. It was Alice Hayden that got upended. Lowell came in in defense of his teammate. Amadou Dia, I believe, has got one of the yellow cards. Lowell coming in defense has also got a yellow. Amadou Dia frustrated that a foul was not called earlier. There's Alice Hayden, a little freeze. And then there's the step in. Find the left fullback. And then after that, the melee ensued. Mr. Garcia now will communicate with the fourth official and his assistant on this sideline. See whether any more cards should be forthcoming. There is one confirmed. Did indeed get the yellow for the initial challenge. You know what? Lawal was shown one as well. As he tried to step over Ellis Hayden to protect him as players came in. And Smith, the coach, pointing the finger at his players and telling him to concentrate. Well, it's a jolt to everybody's system. We've just guaranteed some nervy stoppage time at the back end of this game, if I had to guess. Kuramoto <laughs> will get a yellow as well. This referee's card is just going to be autographed by the entire team. Mr. Garcia is going to have some paperwork at the end of this. Oh, wow. Entirely sure what Kuramoto's role in all of that was, but... <laughs> well, there's no VAR in the USL Championship for those who might be new to the party. And as a result, referees just have to go with what he and his assistants and the fourth official saw. Ali Hodzik. And Vassal drives it away, the lone E from LAFC. And Asante had it ricochet away from him. Yao cuts it over. Shot lifted. High and wide from Chavez. The defensive work for the Foxes continues unabated. As soon as they lose possession, they get behind the ball. And then trailing runners are doing a really good job of putting pressure on on that occasion, taking the ball off the foot of Solomon Asante. Ball lost. 
deflected, brought down Flemings! Phoenix pulls one back, level term, 78th minute, and they refuse to go away. Well, my thought process in this was Fresno have to wake up off of set pieces. The referee's whistle was blown. Martin had frozen, anticipating a, a throw in. Couldn't believe that it was a free kick. Nobody else had reacted other than Flemings. CJ Cochran was claiming something, perhaps a handball, but it clearly comes off of the hat, the chest of Flemings. Beautiful control. Takes it across to his left foot and drills it through the wickets of the goalkeeper. Matt, I think under many circumstances, this is just another crazy game in the West, but this one, I mean, it's coursing through your veins, the electricity at this point. And Phoenix can taste it. John, Asante, Fresno backing into position. Daly knocks it down where Asante can recover. Fresno this year, 12 wins, a loss of four draws when they score first. Conceding first, Phoenix, three, two, and three draws. Ambitious from Yao into space. Calistri on, it's the end for Peter Lee Vassell in this game. He's a fun player to watch, and it's worth noting that as a loanee, he has crossed at his sixth appearance, the five appearance threshold to be eligible for the playoffs. He's a talent. We're going to hear a lot from Vassal. From the same mold as Solomon Sante with quick movement. Great technical ability and changes of direction that will send a defender to the turf. Slide in by Ellis Hayden, the ball hung up just a bit. Carom out to Yao in his Fresno debut. Kuramoto steps in. And it's a little too short to find Asante. Lawal. Lawal gets chase. Lawal on the cutback, stabs it down. Yao goes down, pointing to the spot. Penalty. Controversy everywhere in this game. That was a long ball played forward. The touch from Lawal was sublime. Gombayo goes to the ground, up ends Coromoto. The referee, Mr. Garcia, points to the spot. Gombayo gets the yellow card. 51 50 yellow to Mustafa Dumbuya. Well, look at this. Zach Lubin seizing the starting job in goal this year. Incredible performances along the way. Jaime Chavez brought in to be the striker Fresno just didn't have last year. Fleming's daps up his goalkeeper, gives him one last word of confidence. It's far from a guaranteed winner. But for Fresno, having conceded just moments ago, a pivotal moment in the match, without doubt. Jaime Chavez, the chance to play the, the joker here against Phoenix. Chavez! Fresno leads again! A 
Calmly taken penalty kick. The look of the eye sends Lubin the wrong way. The right foot strikes the ball into the lower left-hand corner. And Fresno have found a way to put the lead leaders behind one more time. Nicely done by Chavez for his 12th of the season. This time, though, can the Foxes hold on? Can they find a way to last the course? We know there's going to be added time to this game. How much is going to be a huge question with that melee that we saw? On comes Ben Spencer. Out goes Chavez. Jamal Johnson comes on. Jamal Johnson, a Manchester United Blackburn Rovers Academy player. Indication is head coach Adam Smith wants things condensed. Spencer is into the game as well for the visitors. Both teams have now fulfilled their full complement of substitutions. John. John in tight quarters can do the spectacular. Is that a handball? Yes! Penalty for Phoenix! Asante draws the penalty! Yellow card to Elijah Martin as well. Melee of players. The man who can change things on a dime. Spins, shoots. I think that Martin is unlucky to get the yellow card there. He knew the nothing of the shot. Asante changing direction so quickly. No backlift, shooting so quickly. Now what can happen at the other end? CJ Cochran now waited years to be a number one. Adam Smith, the former goalkeeper, brought him in. That was his plan. Cochran loaned here a year ago and now called upon against the league's prominent MVP. Asante saved by Cochran. He stopped penalties in two games running. And maybe, just maybe, Phoenix's luck has run out. It was a terrible penalty kick. Trying to send the goalkeeper the wrong way. Goes down. Almost looks like he kicked the turf. Mistimed the touch on the ball. You would not expect that from Asante at all. But relief for the Foxes. Cooper, Hatter, Lawal off target. And CJ Cochran, who's been asked to do the spectacular just a little bit more may have just put the death knell to Phoenix's 20 game win streak with a PK save in the second straight game for Fresno. And yet no one, nobody watching home or abroad thinks Phoenix is done yet. This incredible run doesn't preclude them from one more comeback. And surely Asante is going to bring just his very best down the stretch. I know he's riled up now, and frustrated with that miss. Asante plays a quick Dia back. Asante spins, cutback, shot, short side, and Cochran hangs on. Wow, such skill from Asante. It was like a, a <laughs> blow by there. He just froze the defender. He just kept on the ball so skillfully. Remember at halftime when Phoenix said uh, on Twitter there wasn't much scintillating action yet? It's all spun on a dime. Yow. I think fans with no stake in this game have an elevated heart rate right now. 
Ball knocked down by Spencer, who charges forward and looks for John off the head of Del Campo. Collected by Lambert. Flemings. In all of it, we notice that Spencer is on, but it's Cochrane that has come off, so chances pulled a defender off and thrown a forward on. Trying to get the tying goal. For Fresno right now, they have to take better care of the ball. They can't allow sloppy passes in anywhere on the field. Cross lofted, Kalisri with an effort. That'll go off the back of a Fresno player and lead to a Phoenix corner. Well, Dudia coming across to in-swing this with the left peg. Goal could keep the unbeaten streak alive. Two. Phoenix is upward and onward. Bounces through. John settles. Shoots. Save. Cochran brought down by Asante. Cochran, a couple enormous saves. And this cracked out of play by Dia. And that, along with the penalty save earlier, means Cochran nearly single handedly has kept Phoenix away from an equalizer and a potential game winner. Oh, he'll get a lot of credit for the penalty save, but this is a better save. He had to react down quickly to his left. Charm with wonderful skill to create the space in the box for the shot. Last time these teams met, it was a nil-nil draw back in April. It was a fourth straight draw to start the year for Phoenix. Five added minutes. Phoenix won their next game on the road against El Paso. Less than a month later, his streak began. Leading into that game against Fresno, it was a player's meeting. How do we turn this around? Seven game tying goals scored in the first three games. They couldn't find their way ahead. But they have. For over four months. The talk of American soccer by their play on the field as much as they're savvy off of it. Asante, what's the moves on? Asante again. Asante again. A penalty goes off of Daly's arm. A third penalty in the last 20 minutes. And Phoenix can equalize in stoppage time. My goodness, this is one of the most unreal swings of momentum we've seen in a game all year long and the yellow card comes out for the yellow for the handball again it's the change of direction of asante clearly hits the arm daily trying to remonstrate that his arm was not in an un unnatural position but mr garcia points to the spot Freud couldn't tell Solomon Asante which way to go. Certainly this armchair psychologist won't come any closer. One thing I will guarantee though is that he will strike the ball with Don Sykes more cleanly than he did on the last one. That's a fair guarantee. Cochran two saves on penalties in the last two games. With three minutes to go and Phoenix is back against the wall. They turn to their star again. And Asante, this time off the post! Off the post! Well, he hit it clean up. The goalkeeper got attached to it, I believe. 
If he did, it was the faintest touch with the fingernails. It matters not, it hit the post and goes out. And somehow, some way, Solomon Asante headlines this game with missing two penalty kicks. The man on the precipice of league history on more than one account. One of the most fun-loving individuals you'll ever run into. He wore a crown after the Western Conference final. He tried to give it to Drogba, the king, but instead it stayed with the prince. The prince of a human being. For Phoenix fans, they must feel absolutely sick for him. For Fresno fans, they're ready to fall out of their seats if they're still sitting. So ball came in, Mickey Daly went down, injured. It's nothing serious, of course. Adam Smith has used his substitutions up, although the training staff are indicating that Daly needs to come off. Well, there's no one left. They've used all three substitutes. No matter what, he'll need to come out for at least a moment and be allowed back on. Get your tickets for the you could have written a million scripts for this game and not a single one would have read like this. Uh, anybody had said to me that Asante would miss two penalty kicks in the course of this match, I'd have told you you were absolutely crazy. The man right there, the beyond frustrated. There's a lot of pressure on his shoulders. He's risen to the occasion so many times. This will add further minutes to this game as Daly is being attended to. Well, there's going to be far more than five minutes. It could be even up to 97, 98, given how much stoppage there's been since the five flashed at midfield. Hudzik is in the back line alongside Del Campo. Yao from Jamal Johnson. Yao, good bit of skill. Yao keeps his feet. Johnson. Johnson. To be fair, this was unimaginable. Phoenix on the verge of a regular season championship. In almost any other universe, that's the title everyone's after. You never know what's going to happen on a given day, but over 34 games, without doubt, Phoenix will be champions when it's done. But on this night, an incredible amalgamation of events. Bounces off of Flemings. Cochran waving everybody forward. This may be his crowning achievement tonight. Drives it into the California night. Referee checks his watch. Play continues. Yao. Hampered from behind. Free kick, Fresno. And it is over. Phoenix says, hit me, and they've gone bust in pursuit of 21. Fresno ends one of the most impressive streaks in American soccer history with a 2-1 win at Chuck Tansy Park. And Fresno, as almost a sub-headline, qualified for the playoffs for the first time. C.J. Cochran, man of the match, presented by El Mexicano. A giant save in the run of play. Appreciation from Rick Schantz. 
A penalty save. Another he may have gotten a whisk or two. Pushed off the post. For Phoenix, their attention turns to the playoffs. Fresno now can say the same. 2-1 Foxes. We'll wrap it up after this. Fresno qualifies for the playoffs for Phoenix. Well, it's cosmetic, really. 20 consecutive wins is over, but they're still the number one seed in the West. And for Fresno to win a title, it'll have to go through Casino Arizona Field. But it's a jubilant atmosphere tonight at Chuck Chansey Park in downtown Fresno with Matt Stubbington, Mike Watts. We look at early highlights in this game. Not a whole lot to say about the first half. Not much to say at all. Neither team forcing a save from the goalkeeper. Adam Smith getting his tactics exactly right. But in the second half, things opened up and things really got interesting as both teams were on the front foot trying to find a way to break the deadlock. The goalkeepers were starting to be tested. This one from Fleming stung the hands of Cochrane, whose positioning was absolutely perfect. And then it was Lowell off of the substitute's bench. Of sublime touch. Wrong foots the defenders and then puts it into the back of the net with the left foot. Celebrates with the fans. But then the home team fell asleep. And there was Flemings. He made no mistake with this one. Beautiful control with the chest. Puts it between the wickets of CJ Cochran. And then the excitement started. Huh. Lawal involved again. Gets the ball forwards. Kuramoto is upended. The referee, Mr. Garcia, points to the spot. And there is Chavez with his 12th of the season, putting the goalkeeper the wrong way. And then Cochrane, fantastic save off of Jean, keeping his team ahead at that point. And amazingly, that man there, number 20, Solomon Asante, somehow, some way, missed two penalty kicks, one of which was saved, we know for sure. The other one, we think that. Cochrane got a fingertip too. Well, you see the full-time stats. Not a single soul would have been surprised if Phoenix came in here and saw the scoreline flipped. But ultimately, this is the end of their luck. It was the end of their luck. And really, a monkey off their back a little bit. They can stop talking about the streak and now focus purely on postseason play and what it will take for them to win the championship. Let's take a look at tonight's moment of the match brought to you by McCarty Insurance. And it's the save to keep it at 2-1 for Fresno. Well, it wasn't the best struck penalty kick in the world, but the goalkeeper guessed right. His handling was perfect. Gets his body behind the ball. Makes no mistake. And that was a wonderful moment for Cochran and for the home fans. And then Adam Jean, how he got the space in the box to make this shot, I don't know. But Cochran, a reaction save down to his left. Palming that one out of the danger area. A wonderful moment for him as he celebrates even more with his teammates and his fans as Fresno are heading to the playoffs. Tonight's save of the game brought to you by BMW. Stop by Test Drive, the all-new 2019 BMW 3 Series at BMW Fresno. 
Cochran continues to celebrate. He and Fuego will stop for a photo. Let's take a look at tonight's moment of the match, uh, rather our Zoom image of the match. Kuramoto and Daly both a lot of work done to keep Phoenix off the board for the opening 80 minutes. He did a fantastic job. The defensive lines of Fresno did exactly what they had to do. They stayed condensed. They made the passing lanes as small as they could. And Kuromoto was a huge part of that. He worked so hard in the center area of the pitch. Well, tomorrow, Western Conference playoff hunt continues over on ESPN Plus as Sacramento Republic takes on Oklahoma City. Sacramento quietly has moved into fifth place. They aren't going to catch Fresno or Phoenix, one would imagine. But they could get a home playoff game and be in position with a win to go into fourth, while Oklahoma City, with a win, would move one point behind the playoff line in El Paso. What a moment tonight at Chuck Chansey Park. You never know just how many of these you're going to get, Fresno. So enjoy it while you can. For Phoenix, they've enjoyed it for over four months. Since May, all they've done is win. It's one of the most spectacular streaks anybody's ever seen in the American soccer world. But tonight, it was Fresno's night, CJ Cochran's night, Cutis Lawal's night. For Matt Stubbington, our entire Vista World Link team, Mike Watts saying thanks for watching. So long from Fresno. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.